There's a certain level of escapism that is associated with hiking, adventuring and through hiking in particular. Even something as simple and natural as hiking seems to have its dark side. For me, it's the impermanence of it all. The fact that the good times will eventually come to an end. The result of which is the post-hike blues, or in some cases, post-hike depression. To some of us, this might sound a bit dramatic, but for some of us, it's no joke. This video shares some practical advice for overcoming tough times. These are some things which have helped me lead a happier, healthier life. So I'm sharing some ideas to help you adjust back to a normal life after a big adventure. If you have something to add, share it below. The first piece of advice I wanted to offer you is just to keep walking. Walking is more than just a way to transport us across mountains. It's a fundamental movement pattern for us humans and it's something that is inherently linked to our mental and physical health. Walking is a great way to keep your body occupied while allowing your thoughts to flow freely. So after a long period of walking for many hours a day or weeks or months, there's little wonder that the mind and body suffers from a lack of that most precious and basic of all movements. And whilst walking around your neighborhood might not be as exciting as walking across a country or over a mountain range, I challenge you to take regular short walks and treat them as micro adventures. Admittedly, you might have to look a little harder to find the beauty in what's around your hometown or your city, but you'll be surprised what you find close to home when you look a little closer. Even if you've lived in the same town your entire life, I guarantee you there's a little spot you haven't fully discovered yet, so keep walking. Sharpen your sense of adventure on the mundane like you would a blunt knife on a rock. Stand tall. This is something you instinctively want to do when you reach the top of a mountain. So you stand tall with your arms outstretched, taking in the view while feeling good about what you've just accomplished. It's no coincidence that yogis refer to the standing tall posture as mountain pose. Standing upright with good posture is a powerful position for both the body and for the mind. This position has been demonstrated in clinical studies to increase testosterone levels up to 20% while decreasing stress hormones by even more. And it shows us just how much our body and our mind are intertwined. But you don't need to be on the top of a mountain to feel this good. Try standing upright for two minutes in the morning with your chin slightly tucked, shoulders back and down, and your glutes just slightly engaged. Do this outside in the fresh air and the sunlight or the rain or even the snow. Breathe deeply and if you can, close your eyes. Find your balance there. To some of you, this might seem a little weird. So if that's you, I encourage you to try this out. See it for yourself. For those that already have a practice like this, stay weird. Keep it up. Look on the bright side. In retrospect, it's easy to forget that our adventures outside aren't always sunshine and happiness. When you inevitably return to home life and work and life seems a little dull, remember that you have access to some beautiful things like a warm shower, a cozy bed, as well as all the friends and family you were missing along the way. This is a great time to appreciate those things. I like to write down one thing every day that I'm grateful for. Eat to thrive. One thing I really miss when I'm out in the mountains is fresh, nutrient-dense food and an actual functioning kitchen to prepare it in. Spending some time planning and preparing a dish that you could never dream of making in the mountains can be a great way to either distract your mind or to bring focus into the present moment. And whilst highly processed foods are almost an inevitable part of hiking and adventuring, they're not something that will help you at home. Foods which are high in saturated fats and sugars might make you feel good for a moment or two, but the inevitable result is a crash in energy and the brain chemistry that leads you to feeling flat and drained. It has to be said that eating quality food will make you feel a lot better in both the short term and the long term. And as the old saying goes, you are what you eat. Sleep well.
Spending all day hiking and exhausting yourself in the mountains is a great way to set yourself up for a good night's sleep. And maybe that deep, rejuvenative sleep is something that you might be missing in your day-to-day life. It's certainly responsible for balancing out your brain chemistry that keeps us mentally and physically well. And whilst there's a number of apps and tools to help you analyze your sleep, unfortunately, they all involve your phone. One of the simplest things you can do for a good night's sleep is just putting away your phone or your computer for an hour or so before you want to go to sleep, creating and reflecting. Many of you came across my channel through the little video series that I created about my own through hike and it was ultimately those comments that prompted me to make this video. I think for me, having that creative process of making that series was in a lot of ways very therapeutic and it allowed me the opportunity to express and share some of what had happened in my own little journey. For you, you might not have the inclination or the time to make a video like this, but what I think is important is just sharing the stories. One of the elements of a great story is that the main character changes and evolves in some way and whether you know it or not, the adventures that you have, they have shaped and changed you. So I'd encourage you to reflect on how your adventure affected or changed you, the main character, and to build a story around that, one that shares something real that you experienced. I think one thing that frustrates a lot of people after a life-changing trip like this is their inability to relate to those back in normal life. You might feel that people don't understand the beauty and the power of your experiences up there. So thinking and reflecting on what you've done and literally developing and engaging in powerful story can be a really therapeutic practice. It could be a video like me, it could be a series of photos, a drawing, a painting, a blog post, or just a quiet story told to a friend. Ultimately, our minds are a collection of stories that we tell ourselves and that we tell others. So make it a good one. Diversify yourself. I think one of the more dangerous things about identifying as a hiker or a climber is that in times like these when it's difficult or even illegal to go and do these things, it's that we are really at risk of feeling that deep emptiness of not being able to do the thing that we tell ourselves we are. Around five years ago, I found out the hard way that tying myself to this identity of being a mountaineer or a hiker or a rock climber left me feeling pretty empty when I wasn't able to actually go and do those things. There are some people close to me who are suffering a lot right now because so much of their sense of self is tied to being a traveler or an explorer or a rock climber. And without the ability to go and do that in this moment, they're feeling a deep sense of emptiness. So if you're in that situation, what I offer you is to diversify your inner investments. Branch out a little in terms of what you do and who you are, so that when you can't travel or hike or climb, you have something else to identify with and therefore something to drive you forward. Moving your body. Many of the things that I've shared so far are things that involve both the body and the mind. And for me, the times when I feel like my mind and body are connected most is through movement. If you were to ask anyone who is highly invested in the fitness industry for a solution to depression or anxiety, they would no doubt tell you that you need to be working out or exercising in some way. And whilst I think that is generally good advice, my issue with that is what most people consider to be fitness is done solely in the body and it's only from time to time that the mind is involved when we need to break through some pain barrier or to push ourselves to some point of exhaustion as if we need to beat the body down into submission in some way. If your only source of movement that you get accumulates to a few hours of destroying yourself in the gym each week, then you're missing out on something truly beautiful which is simply experiencing your body while you move. And this mind-body experience can come in many different forms outside of traditional fitness. Martial arts, yoga, dance, breath work, or just slow, deliberate movement. These are some things that encourage proprioception. It's the relationship between the mind and the body. So not only will you be building strength by moving slowly and deliberately, 
but you'll also have a chance to develop that mind-body connection. This is much more likely to bring that balanced brain chemistry that is often promised by the fitness industry, but very rarely delivered. Something tells me that we'd all be experiencing much happier, more balanced lifestyles, and ultimately living in a better world if that was in fact the case. If you are experiencing thoughts and feelings that you feel like are outside of your control and you've tried talking to your friends and family about them and you haven't got the result that you're after, then I would definitely recommend seeking out the help of a mental health professional. I can say from personal experience that it has been and can be very helpful and sometimes we just need an expert to be able to hear us out and allow us to kind of free flow our thoughts and our feelings and tell those stories that are so important to us. In the intro of the video, I spoke about providing some ideas to help you adjust to normal life. But if you've been on an adventure and you've experienced some kind of deep change, then it's possible that what you're experiencing is just some resistance to returning to normal. So rather than going back to normal and changing yourself, maybe what you need to do is stay the same, keep those changes, but then create a new normal. That's something worth thinking about. And maybe you don't need to change anything. Maybe you're great and fine the way you are. I'll leave you with that. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the summit. Yeah. <sighs>